Okay, so this unexpected video is to address issues that 901 and 35 users had. Now, they're not unhappy. It's just I had a little pushback on a 35 because there are people who really like this gun. And you can get good accuracy. There's shooting doctors, at least one I know of, who can get good accuracy with this gun. And so, look, I'm going to go ahead and go over the fact that the engineering on the key components in here are identical 880, 901, the Daisy 35. This just has a smooth bore. Uh, the 901 and the Daisy 35 both have the block handle. And I'm going to go ahead and do, in the full screen format, the rehabbing of a used Daisy 35. No, I'm not going to strip it down for parts. And speaking of that, on my cargo video, is that when would you do a cargo move instead of just ordering parts from the Daisy Southern Bells at Game of Daisy? Well, this, in this case, doing it for Daisy 35 makes no sense to cargo ship this because the Daisy 35 is so affordable, it doesn't make any sense. For example, this gun, I just had contact with someone outside YouTube. They got this gun from a garage sale for about five dollars i had no trigger uh, it's easy it's how, how would i say it it's easy to see how that would happen people take apart their gun they don't know how to get the trigger back together that's why i've done multiple videos on that now and so they got frustrated put it back together and just tried selling it as is and so he got a great deal for five bucks and his does have a trigger now because i told him to order those parts doing a cargo ship for a daisy 35 doesn't make any sense but the trigger assembly through Game of Daisies, only two dollars fifty cents. We'll say another three bucks roughly for shipping and handling. You're going to be in only six bucks, and that's what it turned out to roughly be. So he got roughly a eleven dollar working Daisy thirty five because he just ordered the new trigger assembly from Game of Daisy. So there's times to order and times not to. I would say you're going to do a cargo ship for a much loved gun like an eight eighty, like one of mine that's twenty years old. And the thing is, I have the spare parts, but if you don't have the spare parts, then buying a Daisy 35 to get the parts I show my cargo video out of it makes sense. So if you have a love gun like this, like your 77XS or an 880, then you go ahead and do that. Otherwise, we're going to go ahead and demonstrate on how to rehab a used Daisy 35, and, and this will also cover a 901 and the 880. Okay, so let's begin. Of course, the screws are all taken out already. Remember, on the Daisy 35 to get these guys right here. So let's go ahead and take it apart. Okay. Now, there's a big difference between this one and the 901. Let's just talk about the 901 and the block pumps. Now, I'm okay talking about that because there's very little difference between those guns and the 880 other than this block pump, this uh, stylistically. All right, so let's go ahead and get this out. Now, the thing about the Daisy 35 is you have to take this whole thing apart to get to your pump head assembly. So we're going to go ahead and do what I love to do. We're going to pump it up and push that thing out. Okay. Now, this is where it separates this. I like the engineering. Even my gunsmith likes the engineering. This is all one piece, solid one piece. And it's good for Daisy. It makes the manufacturing easy and profitable. But, okay, so there is your pump head here. Now, it comes out of a little port, sort of like an ejection port on your on a firearm. So we just get that out of there. There we go. And here's the thing that's interesting about this. Okay, now my gunsmith just wanted me, while I'm redoing this, to go in a certain order that he's really picky about. Is that, okay, so we start for rehabbing a used 880, or a 35 in this case, I use 35. We start by getting that out of there. This has to go. That foam has to go. And this is public enemy number one. And the reason I say that is because this has who knows what type of oil on it. This is also plastic right here. So that can take more damage, uh, let's say, with solvents than, than something like this rubber here or the foam. Some kind of light solvent on here. This may stand up to that. Otherwise, take a good look at it. it. does have, it looks, yeah, obviously it has some metal in front. That's a good thing. And that, well, that's actually very good. So, okay. But first of all, this comes off. So we get your O-ring remover. That's what this is. An O-ring remover. And it works fine for your pad. And you get that under. Now, one thing I noticed about the pads for the Daisy 35 and the Grizzly is they're a little easier to work with. So, we just get under there. And... 
you go. So just like that, and we peel it off. These are a little bit easier to work with than the 880. Not a big deal with the 80, but these peel off a little easier. Okay, so that comes off. You get your Q-tip, and you get under that. You get into that plastic spot and really clean it off. So I'm trying to demo here as best I can. That's just give you a rough idea what to do, because there's actually nothing wrong with that one. Now, as far as this, this will fit. What you see here, here, let me back it off a little. What you see here, you can get that from a kit or individually from Game of Daisy. And it's the same when it goes on your 880. All these parts will fit on your 880, and these parts, the 880 parts will fit on this. So that's just a wiper. We're going to, again, that's toxic. We're going to toss that because we don't know what they did to it. So that goes. And again, we're going to go ahead and order that from Daisy. If you're going to order something like wipers and chamber seals, order a few of them. Make it worth your time. So then we get under here. For that, there we go, for that O-ring. And remember, that's a number 11 out of your kit. So that also, okay, we're going to assume that's trash, and we toss that, and then we get up to your kit. Get your number 11 out. Okay, so remember, so number 11 right there, that's where you want to get that. And so then we want to also take the Q-tip and clean that off, clean that off, clean that off really well. Okay, so I'm trying to keep it in good focus here. Clean that off, get in there and scrub that out because you don't know what type of oil they use. You scrub that crevice out and the crevice where the wiper went. All right, and then we proceed. You get your new one out. We're going to go ahead and say that's a new one. You only use your fingers to put that thing back on. There's no need to use a tool. It's really unnecessary, and that goes on pretty nicely. Now, you can... It, it is going to get snagged many times in that first, in that first band for your seal but you just push it on by there you go you just push it on by and there it is now again i now and you make sure to straighten it out with your finger now again i want to make clear that that wiper is identical to what you put on your 880 it's just a different setup here with a plastic pump head okay then we put on our new number 11 like i showed just go over that again you don't need a tool just put it on there like that now also i want to make clear because i have a couple di uh, disassembly videos now that you do not need at all to watch this one for a reassembly. I have plenty of reassembly videos now. So there we go. And there. So now, so that's that. Now that is how we do things for your Daisy 35. There is a rumor that they're gonna start making the 901 like this, which would be great for Daisy. One piece, all integral like that. And you just put it back in there like a ejection port on a firearm. So that's done. Okay. So like I said, we're not gonna do anything that's related to reassembly on this video, but that's okay. Now, okay, so now we go to your barrel assembly. This is identical, 901 Daisy 35 to 880, this is identical. So we go through the drill, we take off your pump head, or I'm sorry, your pump tube. Okay, and there's a couple protocols here. We wanna clean that out get all that nasty oil out of there so you get blue industrial towels from O'Reilly's and this is basically the same diameter and everything like that with the 880 and the 901 it is a different tube because it's a different configuration so it has a much bigger intake hole but you just see how I put it in there like and just twist it like rifling in a barrel and you clean that out it's important that you clean this out you have to clean that out there we go. And you just twist it in there and push it. There we go. Look at that. And see. Now with a now if I know the oil in here is good, but it's not gonna hurt it. I'll just re-lube it again. So then you do that as many times as you get that clean from a foreign gun that you don't know where it's been, you assume they use the wrong oil. Okay, so then we take apart. Take apart. Take apart the trigger. So I know you guys have seen this drill a couple times. I just want to make a couple points though. And then my gunsmith was really, really serious about, okay, then you're certain, here's your knurled side. So you want to put that, face the trigger away from you and pound that out through the hole in the weight. Okay, he wanted me to make one really important point in this video, since I went through the pr trouble of reformatting it. And again, it's all right. I won't be doing any reassembly in this one, but that's not what's important. I have other reassembly videos now. I used to not have any reassembly videos. Now I do. Okay. So as far as this part right here, get that out of the way. 
As far as your valve assembly, I do want to make sure I get that name right. I call this a chamber seal. It does help seal in air, but it's a valve assembly. Now, this one's stiff. This one and this daisy. There we go. Okay. It's, so don't sweat that if... There we go. Okay. Now, one thing he wanted to really make a good point about is that when you clean this out with a Q-tip, you just don't get in here and do the inside. There is a rim. There, I think you can see that. There we are. Beautiful shot. See that rim right there? That's where the that's where the O-ring goes, and he wants that cleaned out. He wants you to get in there and get those edges, get around in there, and get that edge right there. You can see the edge. Got a little piece of... Right there where the O-ring goes on the edge. He wants that clean so that when you get your number seven O-ring out of your kit and put it on here... Well, in this case, I prefer to actually put it in the hole... That crevice right there, that ridge where that O-ring goes is clean, and he means clean till it's white, because you don't know what type of oil they used. Okay, so we just put that in there. There we go. And then I am going to put the valve assembly in here, in this case, because just so you remember how this goes, you check the front, we give it a visual top. Remember, the thing that fails on these valve assemblies is that plastic top on this poppet. So that looks good. Obviously, no problem there. The C-clip is fine. Let's see, that's fine. Everything looks good. The spring's working. So now we put it back in after putting in a new and cleaned it out. You take your time. I'm demonstrating, but you take your time and you make sure that thing is clean. Okay, then we twist it back in. There we go. Tee it up. There we go. All right, now that's all the reassembly I'm going to do on this. Okay, so that's everything you need to know. Again, sorry, no reassembly. Why I'm here, though, I'm not trying to go back to my cargo ship video, but... The parts that you get out of this gun that are identical, just making a point, that are identical to the DayZ 880, are things like your your bolt assembly right here. That also will fit in your Daisy, in your DayZ 880. So that's something that a lot of people don't know, and you do have to take it apart. It is two, it is two parts, but it's not a big deal. There you go. So this also will fit in your DayZ 880. It's the same part. And I've also made clear that your wiper will fit in there. And there's a, a bunch of parts that fit in here, including your chamber seal. Now, as far as your chamber seal and all that goes, let's go ahead and get to this. Is that when you order that from Game of Daisy, order a few of them. I can't make stress that enough. Make it worth your time. So order three or four of these. I am going to put a link on here to a video that shows how to revive this. You may not even have to order it. It's actually for another gun, and you will have to judge yourself. But it's a similar idea, a cup-type designs for actually a crossman. I'm going to put a video link. You may actually be able to revive this without actually buying it. But if it doesn't work, I would say buy it. Personally, I would say buy it. And then, of course, change out your O-ring here. But to do that, first, you have to know, make sure that you clean that spot off. Clean it off. Take your Q-tip. Clean it off. Clean it off. Just clean it off. And then get your Danco number 11 out. Put it back on with only your fingers only. You do not need a tool for that. Again, put everything back together with your chamber seal. Chamber seal looks good. It's not grimy like I've seen in other guns. I'm surprised to see that in some guns. Put it back together. Okay, so that's good to go. That's all been changed out. And again, you either can revive this, or I'm going to give you a link for, link for that, or you just order the parts. Not a big deal. Also, one last thing I want to go over is that with your Daisy 880, the big thing between that thing and the 901 and the 35 is there is a spring that goes in here. And I forgot to talk about that in my last video. So what you want to do, you want to get that spring in back in place. You put the gun together, and then before you apply the screws, cock the bolt back one more time. Gently open it up. See, so yeah, gently open it up, and then put that in there. And then back down you go. And then reestablish the bolt. There you go. So there you go. And then, then reapply your screws. I did forget to do that in my last video. So hopefully you saw how I did that. And you just reapply your screws. Move your bolt forward and you're good to go. Okay, thank you.